Do you want to get your music into Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music and TikTok? Yes, TikTok. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Back in 2005 when I made this song, Spotify didn't even exist. Today everything changed. People can publish themselves on Spotify and other platforms and I'll show you how to do it with DistroKid. Hi, Wasabi Noise here, how are you doing? Today I want to talk about something I use since 2018. This is very exciting because this is the very first promoted video on this channel. This has never been my priority on YouTube, but because it's a product I use and I love, I wanted to share it with you guys. And thank you to all my subscribers, it wouldn't have been possible without your support. This is my opinion and experience with DistroKid. I'm not hiding the fact that there are other options out there. So let's start from the beginning. How do you upload music to Spotify? What are your options? So the first option would be to get signed by a label, in which case usually your label will handle everything so you don't have to worry about anything, you just call Dr. Dre and he will just upload it for you. <laughs> I mean, if you're watching this video, I guess it's not your situation. The other option is to use uh, distributors. You upload your music to their websites and then they distribute it for you to different platforms. And then people listen to this music, hopefully, and at some point in the future, it can take months, you get paid. So yeah, that's great, right? Well, you have to pay the distributor first for that service. A lot of them charge you a fee every time you upload your album or your single. It could be like $30 every time you upload something. And some may even take a cut from the royalty. When I did my research two years ago, I wanted something that was cheap and it allowed me to upload as much music as I wanted. I didn't want to feel constrained about how many albums or singles I could upload. I just wanted to have the freedom to just upload whenever I wanted. So it was really hard to know how much I was going to pay for the service on a lot of these platforms because there are a lot of hidden fees uh, depending on what you want, where you want to send your music, if it's an album, if it's a single, all of these things that was uh, going to constrain me to upload more frequently. That's when I found DistroKid and that's why I'm glad that they approach me now. I especially recommend DistroKid if you want the freedom of uploading your music whenever you want. You can release as many albums and singles as you want and it only costs $19.99 a year. And then the music stays there as long as you pay each year. If you really want to have like an album forever, uh, there's also the option to pay for that. And if you use my referral link, you'll get 7% discount the first year. So yeah, just saying. I've been in this circuit for two years now and every time I uploaded something, it's taken about five days. So if I upload something on Monday, usually by Friday, usually that weekend is available. I think when I uploaded my first single, it took a few days longer because they have to create your page, uh, your artist page on Spotify and Apple. So I would take that in mind. If you upload for the first time ever on any of these platforms, I would take that into consideration. Maybe upload the first single first so you can set up everything and make it look nice I'll show you how I think there's a way if you contact them to get that sorted out before you upload the first single. If you're a small artist, it doesn't really make much difference to have a blank page at the beginning where it's only your name and your first single, and then you just tweak everything as you go. On Spotify for artists, uh, you have provided directory, and you'll see that DistroKid is uh, one of the preferred ways to send music to Spotify. I think most people can go with just the, the basic one, which is the $19.99 a year, that allows you for one artist or name and then you can upload unlimited songs, unlimited lyrics, Spotify, you have the verified check mark. This covers what most people need. I have the Musician Plus because at some point I had two artist names, so everything else is not that important for me, but if you want to have the chance to be on the Spotify official playlist, you need to have a customizable release date because they are not going to listen to a song that it's been released. They want to listen to songs that are upcoming releases. So on the dashboard you have upload, you have my music where you can see all your albums. Uh, you have themes where if you're in a band or you're collaborating with someone else, you could split the revenue. And then you have stats, which I'm not going to go to because I'm not promoting my music. So it's, it's all very low numbers anyway. If you're interested in stats and you're only interested in Spotify and Apple Music, you can check them directly from their websites. So when you get your artist profile on these platforms, then you can go there and check uh, the stats there. And it's a lot nicer than what you have here. Obviously here you will see more platforms. 
And yes, so if you go to upload a new song, you have uh, the stores that you can add this. So you could decide not to upload to Google Play and YouTube Music. And then you have, yeah, all the others. And then you can decide the number of songs. It goes as long as 35 songs. Kudos to you if you can do that. Here you can say if it's been previously released. I think this is only because I have the musician Plus, I have a song that I made in 2005 where Spotify didn't even exist. So I wanted to be true to when I made the song and I wanted to put 2005 there. And then here you will add your artist name. And this will check if your name is already on the stores. It will say, yeah, we found you on Apple Music and Spotify. The release date, that's the thing I was talking about. This is because I have the $35 plan where I can set a release date. And this is very interesting if you want to have a chance to be on the Spotify playlist. If you want to promote your music in some ways that require pre-orders and things like that, so you can set this here. Uh, but yeah, again, this is not really needed. I think most people don't need any of this. And then you have the album cover, which is very straightforward. I've seen on Reddit people had issues with covers, things that they don't own, like a video game or something like that. You can set language here. In my case, it doesn't apply. You have to set it anyway. And then here you have to select the genre. You have the song title, which has a lot of things you can do and you cannot do or they like and they do not like. If I try to type this in lowercase, it will capitalize the L. There's actually a trick, but don't tell anyone I told you. You can go here, you see that when you go over band, there's a, it's kind of a link. If you click here, preserve non-standard capitalization. As you can see, if I put the title and I have something like this, then it will allow me to do it. Uh, but if I have everything in lowercase, it will capitalize the W. Yeah, after doing this, you go here, and you type it again, it will stay like that. Yeah, that's a little trick. Then you can upload the audio file. And then you have this songwriter part where you can also go into covers. And then they also remind you that you cannot sample other artists, cannot do remixes and things like that. There are a lot of things here that are more related to copyright things that I cannot, I don't have a say in that, so. And then, yeah, you have to put your real name here. There's a way to see that on Spotify, but I guess not many people will check that anyway. You could always put wherever you want here. They won't check that. Then you can set the price on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon. You could put your music on Instagram and Facebook. So when you create a story on Instagram, you, you can add music from Spotify. So you could find yourself and add it there. Then let's jump to Store Maximizer first. I don't need this uh, because I can go to my songs and add it manually. It's just for lazy people. <laughs> and then you have Sesame, an iPhone series. It's just one dollar a year and then you have leave a legacy this means that even if you don't pay the annual fee uh they will keep the song forever on spotify and all the stores so you will always get uh the revenue from that at the end you just have all of this uh, which is uh, checkboxes that you have to read and accept. I wanted to talk about the YouTube money part. So one thing that happens is that if you select this, you will have to pay almost $5 a year and the 20% of YouTube ad revenue uh, will go to them. If you select this YouTube money, you will have to check all the boxes here. Like for instance, if you're making a song for a video game, because if the music is in a video game, people usually should be able to stream that or to play that and, and If you check this, you have to check all these check boxes. Does your single contain any audio, beats, loops, samples, video game sounds, other people's music that you didn't create yourself? If so, this single is unfortunately ineligible for YouTube money. Something that is because of YouTube. So yeah, that's that's crazy, right? If you think about it, like a lot of people, a lot of people uses this. It's it's crazy, but that's how YouTube content ID works. And I think this is because they had YouTube in this case had a lot of issues with them because people kept uploading stuff that was created from loops. In general, don't even bother about uh, YouTube money unless you are really creating everything for yourself. So you could distribute your music on DistroKid and then find another platform that does content ID for you. Why am I talking about this? Well, there's been some controversy here uh, with DistroKid because if you 
if you recall, I said my primary genre is blues and then big band. Uh, but if you said this to other genres like hip hop or electronic music, so any of these two will make that disappear. So you won't be able to see that. And I think they, they should explain here uh, why that doesn't appear. And I think that's why people gone a little bit mad. So I wanted to make that clear because uh, this is a sponsored video, but I'm still, but I still wanted to tell you what I think about it. So this is the only thing that uh, for me, uh, it's something that I felt uncomfortable because I think they should make it clear that every time electronic music or hip hop is uploaded, we have 90% of hits. So like, why not? Like there's a lot of electronic music that you could create everything from scratch. And once you do all of these, you feel all of these, then you just hit done and it should appear in five days. Yeah, that's, that's, it's just as simple as that. Everything is straightforward and most things, uh, you don't need to pay for hidden platforms or hidden things. You can go to your artist and add your information here. Uh, so it will take a few days to get verified and all of that. But yeah, you get that blue thing here and then you can, you can change your images and all of that. And then on Apple Music, uh, you can add your image, but you have to take a lot of things into consideration. You have to just put an image, uh, like a photo, and then Spotify, it's very easy. You just upload it and usually it takes a few minutes. In Apple Music, they have like some guidelines that you have to follow and they review it. Uh, so yeah, just have that in mind. I hope this was useful for you if you're planning to sign to DistroKit or you want to have your music on Spotify and Apple Music and all of that. For me, it's been very useful because then you kind of see your music in a different way, in a different perspective. When you keep your music for yourself, stay in your own bubble where you see your music and you don't really think uh, about it compared to others. I recently uploaded uh, an EP. Now I see a lot of things I would change. And I think the reason why I notice these things is because it's uploaded there and I have other music available there and it's kind of a psychological thing maybe. Just being out there, it makes you feel like you have to care more about your music. I'm not promoting my music. I don't know how to do that properly. And at the moment it's not my priority, but at least there's a way to upload my songs. Anyone can upload their music very easily and it's very cheap. If you end up signing for DistroKit, it's up to you, but if you do and you use my referral link, uh, you'll get 7% discount and I will thank you for your support because yeah, that means a lot to me. I want to keep doing this thing, but uh, I have a nine to five. I have to do this on the side. This sponsorship uh, means a lot to me as well because it means that the channel is uh, reaching to more and more people. It's still small, but I'm really grateful for anyone that it's been subscribing to the channel. So thank you very much and I see you on the next one.